Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a spelling app um, project. So how it works is you click on this um, green button that says get word and the computer will tell you what word to spell. This app might be useful if you want to prepare for, for a spelling new competition or maybe just a regular school spelling test. So now I'm going to press this green button. I was supposed to press blue after I was done spelling it. You are correct. See, it says I am correct. And now if I press get new word, it just refreshes my browser and probably gets me a new word. So if I click this again. Your word is cat. Let's say I misspelled cat. Let's say I spelled it backward or something. You misspelled your word. It's gonna say it is actually it. spelled C-A-T. And it actually tells me how, how to spell it and whether I was right or wrong. So yeah, if you want to learn how to build this project, please watch the video until the end and I'll show you exactly how to do so. It's not that complex, so I think you guys should be able to handle it. The first thing I will do is create my boilerplate code, which I already have. And then, in, in between my two body tags, I'll create an h1 tag and give this an ID of heading. And inside of it, I'll just type spelling app. And then after that, I'll create a div and give it an ID of container. And inside of that container, I'll create an input. Whoops, let me type space. Input and then give it an ID of input as well, since that's the only input we'll be using. And then div ID equals buttons. This div will be storing three buttons. So I'll just use the keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio Code, which is button times whatever, however many number of buttons we want to create, which is three. Whoops, no, that was the class. Just do button times three there. Like that, put them on different lines. And I might as well go grab my bootstrap link and then link it up here. rel equals style sheet. Oh, I misspelled it. Style sheet href equals the bootstrap link and for the first button I'll just give an ID of check button and for the second one it will have an ID of get word button so the computer will fetch a word out of an JavaScript array versus spell a random word we'll get there in a minute and I'll name this get new word and I'll name this get word and this will just say check or maybe enter or something like that you can name it whatever you want and we are done with our HTML. We, we can get started with our CSS now, since we're done with the HTML. So in my style tags, the first thing I'm going to style is my browser. So I'll type body, background, color, hashtag 222. And then after that, I'll style my buttons and do display flex, flex, direction, column, and then after that, I'll style my, my container, so hashtag container. I'm going to give it quite a lot of CSS styles, starting with border, 1 pixel, solid, black. Padding 20 pixels, I don't know why it's not going to the next line. Padding 20 pixels, display flex, so we're using flexbox here. Justified content, center. Flex wrap wrap well yeah and then with 50% so let me explain what this means so with 50% it's just gonna take up 50% of the available width of the browser so the entire browser is from this end to this end so it's only gonna take up 50% like you see it's taking up roughly 50% if I'm eyeballing it correctly and yeah this is what it's saying it's just taking up a portion of the browser's available space. That's all it is. And then margin auto position. Whoops, I don't know why I deleted the semicolon position relative top 170 pixels. And then I'll do border radius 20 pixels. And these values won't work and look exactly like mine if you don't have your screen zoomed in at at 100%. So if you zoom in too big, it's going to look a little weird. So you have to keep your zoom at 100%. And 
and then after that border of three pixels solid white so we can actually see it on top of the dark background which means I can get rid of this since it's not working anymore and then underneath that container I'll just style my last element which is my heading so it's going to have a font weight of bold font size of six Wait, let me type that again. Font size 6, REM, font family, Verdana, Geneva, whoops, that's not it. And then after that, I'll do font, not font, but text shadow, 0, 0, 5 pixel blur, and white. And we'll just copy and paste this down a few more times to give it that glow and also modify its values. Make this 100, make this 30, and make this maybe 15. And now we can start uh, adding JavaScript to make the, um, the spelling thing actually work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a few variables. And my first one will be an array, which is um, words. And inside of it, I'll just give it a few words for me to spell. like. I'll just do an alphabetical order starting with apple, banana, just simple words, you know, you can pick any words you want. I'm probably going to do 10 or 12 words and then I'll stop. Firefly, giraffe, house, ice cream, I'm just making them up as I go. Jack, bop, and maybe kangaroo, and that's good enough. And then I'll create a random word variable and set it equal to words, square brackets, and inside of it I'll do math.floor, math.random times words.length. So let me break down what all this is saying if you guys don't understand. So um, I'm just going to pick a random word from this array by doing math.random. So math.random, it returns a number between 0 and 1, and it's going to multiply that number by the length of the array, which is how many, however many um, elements are in here. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's going to multiply it by 10. And whatever the result is, it's going to do math.floor, which will round the result down. So it's going to be a whole number. And then I'll create a few variables for my buttons. So document.get element by ID button then bar button two equals document dot get element by ID. And this is get the get word button ID. And then our reset button. Reset button. And I'm gonna give each of them a class name. Button dot class name equals so pay attention with what's about to happen. So if I give this button a class name of button button primary, it's going to use that bootstrap link and make it turn blue. So if I refresh, it doesn't turn blue. Okay. Well, maybe I didn't link it, link it correctly. Yeah, I misspelled style sheet. And then now, it should work. Button button. I think the name of the button. Oh, the name of the button was actually check button, not just button alone. And now it turns blue. Yep. And I'll just do the same thing for button 2, but give it a different class name. In Bootstrap, there's a lot of colors with different keywords that you'll have to call in JavaScript to make it turn to that color. Like button, button, let's say, success. Success is green, and it makes sense why. And then, reset button dot class name. There's a few more that I know, like button, button, danger, or warning. So button button warning will make it turn orange, orange is yellow, and button button danger will turn it red. Let's go with the red for now. You can pick whatever color you want, but I'm going to choose red for mine. And for my resetting button, it's really easy. Just do click function, and then inside that function, whoa, I don't know what's just typed there. And then I'll just do location dot reload which is just going to refresh our browser when we click on the button. So if you, if we click on this get new word button, you should notice that this will is going to refresh. Yep, see, it's toggling. And 
then I'll add an event, an event listener for my. Actually, first I'm going to create a variable, another variable called speech, and give it and set it to new speech synthesis utterance. And this is what allows our computer to talk. It's a speech API. I'm not really sure how to explain to you guys like how it works and all, but I will teach you that in the future. So for my button, like my variable button, I'm going to give it an event listener of click then function inside the function I'll do var input equals document dot get element by ID input dot value so it's whatever input we type in here and after that I'll do a few if statements so input if input equals equals random number so if whatever number I mean if whatever word we typed into the input matches the random word that was chosen from the array then the computer will say I'm gonna say speech.text so the computer will say you are correct and if we have an if statement we also need to have an else if statement I'll do else if input does not equal equal random not random number should be a random word I don't know why I typed random number random word or else that wouldn't work if I did do that else if input does not equal e equal random word then the computer will say you misspelled your word misspelled your word plus so we're doing string concatenation this is basically just combining a string of text with other strings of text and then I'll do plus it is actually spelled And then I can do plus random word dot split. So it's going to split the word into individual letters. And this is a method, so I need to type these two set of parentheses. Inside of these, I have to type two quotes with no spaces in between them. And I also have to do speech, speech dot rate, which um, sets how fast the computer will be talking, will be speaking. So it's going to talk at 85% speed, rate, whatever you want to call it. And then speech.rate equals 0.85 as well for this. And to make it actually talk, we have to do window.speechsynthesis.speak speech. Actually, I don't, th I don't think we actually need window. We can, t we can get rid of it, but I'm just going to keep it. It's going to work either way. I just like using it that way. Then button 2 dot add event listener is going to listen for a click event like always and inside of the function it's just going to say var input equals document dot get element by id input dot value and we're going to set a few s speech properties to, for our computer to, to say like speech dot text equals your word is plus random word so when you click on button 2 which is this blue check button when you click on it the computer will say your word is and whatever the random number random word is that's what it's going to say so let's say it picked cat then it'll say your word is cat and you'll have to spell cat if you spelled it correctly this if statement will be triggered and it'll say you are correct if you spelled it incorrectly this else if statement will be triggered and it will say all of this and this is how functions and if statements work. I'll go more in depth with all those concepts, all those JavaScript concepts in the future, in later videos. And then I can do speech.pitch equals one, speech.lang equals enus. That's so the computer is speaking English. We want we wouldn't want it speaking a different language, or else we wouldn't understand it. Unless you guys uh, speak a different language, then that's a whole different conversation and speech dot rate equals one and our very last line of code before all this actually starts working we just have to type window dot speech synthesis let me add some space so you guys can read it better dot speech synthesis dot speak and it's gonna pass in the speak and we should be done let's test it out so I'm gonna click get a word your word is firefly. So, if I spell firefly correctly, 
you are correct. I'm say you, I'm correct. And I'm gonna get a new word. Your, Your word is Jackbox. And this time, I'm gonna purposefully misspell it. So I'll just type a bunch of nonsense in here. You, you misspelled, misspelled your word. word. It, it is actually spelled J-A-C-K-B-O-X. Dang, this is a smart computer. <laughs> it could be in the spelling bee. I'm just kidding. Anyways, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys found this helpful. Maybe you could even use this on your school's spelling test. And if you do, good luck. Try not to get caught or else you'd get in trouble. And why did I point out the obvious? Obviously, you're going to get in trouble if you were caught using this spelling app I taught you how to build. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and found it fun and useful, please drop a like and comment saying that you subscribed and liked. And other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day and I'll see you again in my next video. I hope to see you again in my next video. I hope you guys have a nice day. Mm -hmm.